into helping you understand the 11 attributes to become a unicorn in a coaching business, to become a unicorn in a knowledge-based business. So if you're going to be going in depth into all the 11 attributes, I would recommend that you pull out your notepads, pens and papers and actually take notes. And uh, by the end of this video, you'll have clarity on how you can stand out. And I'll tell you what's the word unicorn. The, un the term unicorn was coined in 2013 by a venture capitalist named Aileen Lee. And he chose the mythical animal to represent a statistical rarity in such successful ventures. So even in the training and coaching industry, in the knowledge business, there are a few people who actually stand out from the crowd. For example, say Tony Robbins. Okay, there are many people who are doing similar things like what he's doing, but he's on a totally different level of, of impact and reach and the kind of results that he's been able to get and where he's been able to work with some of the biggest, biggest of the big names. So there are unicorns in every different industry. If you look at it, uh, you know, let's let's look at uh, the whole funnel industry here. We have guys like Russell Brunson, who's a unicorn in that. Though there are many people who are building, you know, funnel based systems, landing page systems. But Russell Brunson has actually come out to be the guy who's really propagated that message in a much more effective way with much higher impact than anybody else that I know of. OK, so having said that in, in this video, I'm going to first share with you the three concepts on what does it take to become a, a unicorn? And uh, I'm going to share with you 11 attributes, 11 attributes that actually make a unicorn. So what I'm going to do is uh, if, if you're ready to learn, just type R RTL in the comment box. RTL is ready to learn. In the meantime, if you're watching this video on my YouTube channel or on my Facebook, just subscribe to my, my Facebook page if you're here. Uh, hit the follow button and uh, make it see first. And also make sure that you, you follow me on YouTube. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to share this on uh, on a couple of groups before I get started. And let's begin. Let's begin. By the way, just type in the comment box if you're watching me live at this point is what is your area of expertise? What is that area that you are actually specialized in in the knowledge business? Yeah. Just type that in the comment box. OK, so. Fantastic, fantastic. Great to see a lot of you tuning in. Nice. Okay, good. So let's begin. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to share with you a few concepts. Okay, let's stop this uh, ticker here and I'm going to share a few concepts. Okay, the, the first concept I want to share is that before we get started into the attributes, okay, the first concept is this. There is room for many, okay? Many people think that unicorn has to be just one person or it just has to be one. No, actually, there's, it's, there's room for many. But the reason why you know, people don't end up becoming at the peak of their game or whatever is because they're just playing the 80% of the group. For example, the Pareto's principle says that 80 per, you know, 20% of the world creates 80% of the wealth. Or, or the top 20% of the top 20%, the top 4 to top 5% actually create the maximum you know, results in any field if you look at it. So people think that, okay, there's, a, there's not room for many on the top there, but that's not true. The first concept I want to tell you is that there is room for many people to become a unicorn if they have to become one in their space, because the reason they don't become a unicorn in their space is because they are not aware of the 11 attributes, which is what I'm going to share with you. Okay, so the first concept is there is room for many. And if you're just hopping in right now, if you just uh, hopped in for this live session, I just want to tell all of you that the topic for this video is... I'm going to share with you the 11 attributes to become a unicorn in the training and coaching business in a knowledge business. Okay. So let's come to the second concept here. The second concept uh, before I get started on the 11 attributes is most of these unicorns who are like super, super good at what they do. They, they have a relentless, they're put in relentless hard work. Okay. There's nothing like overnight success. In fact, there's a beautiful quote, you know, overnight success comes. When you have enough of sleepless nights working on yourself, enough of hard work, sleepless, and one night you have this overnight success. So how many of you agree with me on this point? Just type, I agree in the comment box, okay? That it requires relentless hard work and energy and, and passion to make this happen. And the other thing is, if you look at some of the biggest unicorns, either in the startup world or even in the coaching world, like let's take, for example, Tony Robbins himself, is the insane desire to serve people, the insane desire to uplift humanity, the insane desire to really go beyond themselves. And that's what is, a, is I would say, one of the key differentiators between the masses and the classes. So these are the three concepts over here. And this is what 
makes a difference if you want to become a unicorn. Okay. So what I want to do is, uh, yeah, I can see a lot of experts over here. We have uh, Diman Manish is saying that he's into marketing and sales. That's awesome. And we have uh, somebody here like Arul who's saying that he's good at teaching English, grammar, cursive handwriting, and he also wants to market, you know, a couple of products across Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh. That's great to know. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. So I would like you to just type in the comment box. What is that area or what is that topic which you want to become a unicorn in, where you are known as the guiding light, the lighthouse in your space. Type what is your niche or what is your topic below. And I, I will actually feature your, your comment if you're watching me live over this. Okay, if it's a recording, then you won't be able to, I won't be able to feature you. But if you're watching, a, watching me live, I want to feature that. So let's jump into the 11 attributes to become a unicorn. Okay, 11 attributes. Attribute number one. Please take notes because this is going to be the most important part of, uh, of today's session. Okay. The first in the first uh, point, the first attribute is having the right intentions. Intention is everything. Is your intention only about you or is your intention about them? Is your intention is, is it more to do with creating a better impact in the world or is your intention just to make a lot of money? Okay. Now it can be both, but the core intention matters a lot. And people can see through your intentions. You can say whatever you want from your mouth. You can do a lot of lip service. And there are many people that I know in the training and coaching world. When I look at their videos, they're saying the right things, but I, I just cannot feel it. How many of you are able to resonate with what I'm saying? Just type I can if you, if you can resonate with me on what I'm saying. Yeah. You may say the right script, but if people cannot feel it on the other side, it is because you are not congruent. Okay. Let's say, for example, you're watching somebody's video. And they are, uh, you know, they're saying all the right things, but internally you feel there's something wrong with this person. You know, what is wrong? What is wrong is, is, is it's that you're right. Okay. The, the first part is that you're right about that feeling because the person on the other side may not be congruent in their thoughts, words, and actions. It's as simple as that. Because if somebody is, is, is congruent in their thoughts, words, and deeds, and if they have the right intentions, okay, it becomes into a message that can communicate on a more deeper level. Yeah. Fantastic. We have a lot of people over here into various topics over here. Fantastic. Fantastic. Great. Nice. Let's come to the second attribute now. Okay. The second attribute, second attribute, if you want to become a unicorn in your knowledge business, in your coaching and training business is craftsmanship. Craftsmanship. Now, what do I mean by craftsmanship? It is, People who are in the top of their game, they are masters of their craft. And the craft, it means like knowing everything about it to, to the extent that they can see most people. If you look at the first level, if you've heard of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, rules of success, okay, go and go and see on, uh, you know, on YouTube, there's a beautiful video on that. He says the most successful people are the ones first who they, they follow the rules and they, they understand the rules and then they go and, uh, break the rules. They don't break the law, but they break the rules of the game because of the, the depth of knowledge that they have developed and the, the craftsmanship that they have developed so that they can actually poke in new ideas into that same space or industry that they're in. Okay. So the second uh, attribute of somebody who's in the knowledge and coaching business who ends up becoming unicorn are those who are Masters of their craft and who end up becoming game changers. Like they, they actually move the market in a, in a new direction. And that only comes when you master the craft. Okay. So how many of you here are going to master your craft? Just type, I will in the comment box. Okay. Type, I will in the comment box, because only if you set this as an intention, will anything move forward. Okay. Let's come to the third element or the third attribute of a unicorn in the knowledge space. People who are unicorns in the knowledge in the knowledge industry and the coaching industry, uh, they have uh, depth in knowledge. There are many people who have width in knowledge. They know a little bit of many, many things and they may seem very knowledgeable. But those who are able to go deep, who are able to go much deeper into concepts and bring out new insights about this game, they are the ones who are truly going to create a, you know, they, they will stand out from the crowd. And as a beautiful exam, example and analogy that I've uh, learned uh, on this, you have um, just think about the ocean. 
is one type of water body. You have marshy lands, which is another type of water body, like a very shallow lake. And then you have the well, okay? Well, which is another water body. Now you look at the ocean. There's so much of water, but it really cannot be used. We cannot drink the water from the ocean, right? And an example of somebody who's like the ocean are those people in the world who have a lot of degrees, who have a lot of educational qualifications, like a whole tail of degrees next to them. They are overly qualified. They have so much of knowledge that they have acquired, but they cannot use it anywhere. How many of you can relate with what I'm saying? Yeah, just type uh, ocean in the comment box. I want to read that comment ocean. If you understand, if this concept has gone deep in, don't be, an, don't just be an ocean. Don't be just somebody who's just acquiring knowledge and, and getting certificate after certificate after certificate after certificate. But what is the use of all of that? Unless you can use that knowledge to solve a problem. That's the first category. Okay. When I say depth in knowledge, you'll understand what I mean by this, by the end of this analogy here. Okay. Then we have the second category of person who is like the marshy land. See the marshy lakes where it's hardly like one or two feet of water. Uh, that's an example of somebody who knows little bit of many things. Yeah, they know little bit of many, many, many things. But again, you cannot drink that water because it is very, it's dirty water. Okay, there's no depth over there. So if, if this has gone in deep into your mind, just type uh, marshy lake in the comment box. Type marshy lake. So a marshy lake, a shallow lake, you cannot drink that water because it's dirty. And, and this is an example of somebody who is a knowledge giver, but who knows little, little of everything. They will just read like one line or they'll, they'll watch some one video. There won't be any experiential knowledge. It is just head knowledge. There is no implementation that has been done. And they just go, they just go and share that knowledge out there. And it they make it sound bombastic. Like they make it sound like really that they have so much of knowledge, but, but it's very, it's very shallow, very shallow. And some of you can actually, you know, uh, make that. I mean, you can make out that when you are watching other people speak. Okay. And the best part is these people who are like the marshy lake and stuff, they may have a good first impression. They may be able to get a good first impression. But then once they start to, you know, once you start to follow them in other places, once you start to go more, go through more of their videos, you will start to realize that they're just re repeating the same content again and again and again. And there's, there's actually, there's no substance over there. It's just the same stuff coming over and over and again, okay? So a marshy lake is the second category of a knowledge giver where there's no depth in knowledge. Let's come to the third category. The third category is somebody who's like a well. They have dug the well, they've gone deep, and they've gone so deep in the well that they can keep pulling out water whenever they want from that well. Because there's so much of knowledge over there. It is not about the ocean. It is not about the marshy lake or just trying to show off that they know so much but they have they become specialists and experts in their craft in one area where if anyone thinks about that person, they know that that person can solve their problem and they can actually give out that water from the well to many people for them to drink also. So how many of you would like to be the well? Just type I am well in the comment box. Okay. Just type I, I am W E L L. Yes. You got to become that well. And sometimes it's good, you know, uh, the way that I approach the whole game of uh, coaching training, and I'll tell you how, the, the method that I also went through is, first I went wide. I went, I, I wanted to understand what is what is going on in this entire industry. And then I started to make a list of all the people that I'm following and I started to look through patterns of what they're doing. So first I went wide. Then after that, I started to go narrow, like because even in, like for example, I was in the digital marketing space, uh, you know, I, I am in the digital marketing space and it's such a wide space to be in. And then, I, I looked at all the different things that are going on in the digital marketing space. Then I then I started to narrow down on the area of, you know, creating digital teachers and digital leaders. Okay, so I, I got narrowed down in that, and then now I'm going deep in this. Okay, so you first go wide, then you go narrow, and then you go deep. That's the best way to learn. And some of the most successful people in the world, uh, if you look at all the billionaires, multi-billionaires, they have a full stack brain, which means that they have awareness on various aspects of life. They understand the world from various lenses, uh, from various perspectives they're able to have, but ultimately they are known only for one thing. Okay, you look, you look at any uh, you know any person who's created a shift in this world. Say you look at Gandhi or look at Steve Jobs, look at Elon Musk, what he's doing right now. He's they are all just known 
if you, if I say Steve Jobs, it's just Apple, like the guy who's just driving innovation and technology. Okay, you can just bring it down to one line. Same thing, Elon Musk is doing that. Okay, so look at some of the biggest movers and shakers in the world. They, even though they have awareness of various aspects, they're focused on one thing. Warren Buffett. Go and search on YouTube. Okay, sorry, go and search on Google. Warren Buffett growth graph. Okay, you'll be amazed as at how slow his growth was, but it went exponential after he hit 57, 58 years because he was doing the same thing. He was stuck to the same trajectory for a long period of time without jumping from one thing to the other. So when I say, when I tell you, you have to dig your well, you have to master that craft, go deep and don't change the trajectory. Trajectory is very, very important. Most people, they, they start to dig the well and then they feel, oh, there's something else. There's one more shiny object that is shining out there and it's, it's really good. And then they make the jump. And this effort where they could have actually continued on the same trajectory and made something big, they again, they end up starting from ground zero. And they dig one more well for just like three, four feet. They become like a marshland and they jump to the next again. So when you're jumping like this from one thing to the other, you will never ever succeed. Now, if this concept has gone deep into your mind, just type bulb on. If your bulb just went on. When I say depth in knowledge, this is what I mean. Okay. Now let's come to attribute number four. The fourth attribute, if you want to become a, a unicorn in your knowledge space. Okay. The fourth attribute. Let's go deep into it and let me share this with you. Number four is having original ideas. See, whatever I'm sharing today in this video, it is not something that I've cut, copied, or pasted from somewhere else. I sat today, I was contemplating on this point for 30 to 45 minutes, and I made a list of these 11 attributes. These are original ideas coming from my mind. Okay. Even though I've taken elements, I have my mentors, I go through, but I don't just rip off exactly what they're saying. So if you want to be a, a unicorn in your space, you have to get into this entire practice of developing your, your own unique original ideas, which can be from based on learnings from everywhere, but you give it your own flavor. You give it your own packaging, your own uniqueness. Now, whatever I'm sharing here, it is not rocket science. It is all of you know it. I mean, many, many of us already know these concepts, but the way that I'm, in which I'm presenting it is in a unique way. Okay. I don't think there's anybody, you go and search on, you know, you know, how to become a unicorn in the coaching industry. I don't think you'll find any videos like that online, but this is a unique concept that I wanted to share based on the 11 attribute, but I'm just integrating the elements that I've learned from all other places. Okay. And based on even through personal experience. Okay. So coming up with original ideas and developing on it is the key. And for you to develop original ideas, you have to have that much of, uh, you know, digestion time. I want, I want you to imagine this as three parts here. The first part of the game is consumption. So you consume knowledge, you get information from, from different places. You follow a very, very few mentors. In fact, I would say you, you should not have more than three mentors overall. Okay. Ideally it's, it's to have one mentor who you can follow and model. And maybe you can have two more just to bring some different angles and perspectives to as long as the, the philosophy and the trajectory is, is the same and uh, in all the three mentors. Okay. So first phase is to consume information. The second phase is to digest that information. So whenever I listen to a podcast, whenever I listen to a video, I like to take notes and I always have my notepad open and I just, I don't like write big notes and stuff. It's just like bullet points, like a one line, two line. And I just, and then I'm looking at those points and then I have like a whole, uh, like notepads with multiple notes of multiple podcasts. And then when I skim through it, when I look at it, uh, that is my way of digesting the knowledge. So I'll, I'll pick up patterns from here and there. And then when I decide, okay, so today morning I decided, okay, I want to just do this uh, video on, uh, on how I can really help this community, how I can help my community, you know, really create an impact in the world. So what is that impact word? When I looked at the startup industry, the, the word unicorn popped up over there. And some of you just hopped in right now. The term unicorn was coined in 2013 by a venture capitalist called Alan Lee. Uh, and choosing a mythical animal to represent a statistical rarity of such ventures. So if you want to be the statistical rarity in your, in your space, then you need to, you know, think in terms of unicorn. And actually, if you see in the startup world, a unicorn is a privately held startup that's valued over $1 billion. That's actually the terminology used for, for a unicorn. 
But I just thought I'll use that same word and bring it into this particular topic over here. So when I talk about original ideas, I hope all of you have understood now by now that you need to consume information, you need to digest that information. And once you digest, then you go and develop your own unique model, your, unique, your, your own unique formula, formulation, uh, which is in alignment with the mentors that you follow. How many of you are finding this powerful? Just type super powerful in the comment box. Type super powerful. You know, if you get this one point here, there's no doubt you'll become a unicorn in your space. There's no doubt about it because 99% of the people out there in the training, coaching, consulting industry are just copycats. Okay, I'm sorry to say this, but I'm seeing this happen. Okay, I'm seeing this happen. Uh, I'm looking at the patterns of the industry here. And I'm so glad that I, I'm, I'm actually building and nurturing a community right now where we have these right ideals and the right concepts. And this uniqueness is going to be uh, what's going to bring out the, you know, the value in the marketplace. Otherwise, it will just create a distortion in the marketplace where they have so many people doing the same thing, where there's no uniqueness, there is no original, there's no originality, there's no uniqueness in ideas. And, uh, you know, it, it loses the value. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much. Let's come to the next point over here. Point number five is if you want to become a unicorn in your coaching and training industry, you have to focus on getting results. See, money is a scorecard in business. Love is a scorecard in relationships. Vitality is a scorecard in uh, health, health, wealth and relationships. Okay. Very, very important. If you focus on getting results for yourself at stage one, and then you simultaneously keep the focus on helping your students get results. If your focus is only on the on, on helping them get the results and helping yourself get the results, there's no doubts that you'll become a unicorn in your space. Yeah, there's no doubts about that. Because it is people by results at the end of the day. You know, when people come to my webinars, they attend the webinars, I share a lot of concepts. But ultimately, my goal is not to sell my products. My goal is to help them get the result that they want. And people buy results. All of you type that in the comment box. Yeah. Type people buy results. Yeah. And the reason I'm doing this, this particular live session is so that we can help create a community of knowledge givers who can help people get better results. Because if that is going to be the focus, it'll create like a massive shit, a shift and a massive abundance in the world. Okay. Fantastic. Good stuff. Good stuff. Let's come to attribute number uh, six here. By the way, are you guys loving it? Just type uh, loving it in the comment box. If you're loving this concept over here. Yeah. Excellent. 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 And I'm so glad that in my community, most of the people are actually developing their own unique formulas over here. Okay. Yes. You will find a few copycats here and there. But the but those people who will actually shine and come through are the ones who will be unique. Okay, and uh, I just want to thank all the members of my community, even if you're watching this live, for being that unique person. Amazing. Now let's come to attribute number six. Attribute number six is again it's to do with attribution. You got to give you need you need to attribute your success to mentors. There are many many people that I know in this industry. They say a lot of things. They put out quotes without giving the attribution to where that came from. And they want to make it seem as though it is their own. Total BS. Okay. I feel it is the worst thing that, I mean, I wouldn't say worst thing, but I mean, it just shows the caliber and quality of that particular person where they're learning something from somewhere else. And they've learned it from some mentor who's, who's really, you know, put in their effort and who's spent their own whole lifetime in coming up with some concept. They've learned it from there and they come and share it and say as, as though it is their own. That's the worst thing that you can do to your own mentors. How many of you here believe that you have to give attribution and you need to give due credits to where you got your information from? Yes or no? Just type 100% in the comment box. Yeah. Like even now, I, I just use the word unicorn and I, I just picked it up, you know, from where did I get that? Unicorn was actually the word which was uh, coined by uh, Aileen Lee. 
I cannot say that it is, it's my own coinage over here. So you have to attribute, even in your course, when you're creating your courses, when you are creating your own systems and your own formulas, like for example, when people go through my coaching process, I always keep attributing back to my mentor. Some elements, like he shared with me the five pillars of freedom. And I share that in my course. And I say, this is what I've learned from my mentor. And I attribute it. And then I also look at a few other, uh, I share a few other examples. Like in, I have a course, like Facebook traffic course that I have, where I go deep into fractal Facebook ads. And I'm learning that from a different mentor. Okay. It's a slightly different way of approaching Facebook ads. And I acknowledge from where did I learn that technique from. And I've adapted it in my own way for my audience, for my topic, for my industry to get people into webinars. So I've used the same concept, but I've, I'm implementing in a, in a slightly different way. So it's very, very important for you to attribute uh, you know, attribution to mentors. You need to attribute your success to your mentors. It'll do two things. One is it will check your ego. And two is the students who are learning from you will also develop that same attitude of attributing you when you are actually going to be giving them some knowledge. The, the cycle has to continue you know, in that way. So it will be a very healthy and holistic way that on how you're going to build your community of students. Okay. Awesome stuff. Now let's come to number seven. Attribute number seven that can make you a unicorn in your coaching and training industry is the unicorns are the ones who are masters at the art and science of this game. There are two elements to the game of coaching, the game of knowledge giving. Can any of you give me examples of uh, what is the art side of the game? What all could you categorize under art? In the whole business of knowledge giving, coaching, training, consulting. Awesome. Thank you, Rashmi, for mentioning that. Yes, Rashmi is saying, give credits to where you got it from 100%. Yes. What do you think is the art side of the game? Let me read some comments now, and I'll feature your comments up here live. Okay. According to you, what do you feel is the art side of the game? Okay. Upendra is saying, maybe the approach. So the way that you communicate your knowledge, there is an art side to it. Yes, the art of story building, Gaurav, very good point. Story building, because that is something which everybody can say it in a different way. Okay, Lina Chandan is saying uh, faith. Yes, it could be uh, on the art side of the game. We know saying how to create. So maybe, okay, let's come to this. Uh, the presentation can be the art side of the game. Absolutely. Uh, public speaking can, can come under art. Because it is again to do with communication and the way that you, you put things across. Self-expression, Kavita. Yes, that also would come under the art share of the game. And just being creative, like uh, Naveen has mentioned here. So the visuals that you use, the, you know, the cover art, your branding, all of that would come under the art, under the art share of the game. Yeah. Mukesh is saying art is subtle things or mindset. Exactly. Yeah. And even the way that you communicate with people, connect with people. Nice. Mandar is saying, yeah, how I uh, present using mind maps. That's also artistic in one way. I'm making it visually appealing for people to uh, digest that knowledge through mind maps. Appreciation and acknowledgement. Trust building is an art. Yeah. Oratory, oratory skills, speaking skills. Thank you for mentioning. I think all of you have got some ideas here. Okay, so coming back over here, the art side of the game is anything to do with the creativity. Like, so for example, how you present knowledge, how do you really come up with the new ideas? Like now I'm using you know, the unicorn example. So it's also, there's an artistic element to it. That is like, I want to present the same information. I could have titled this, uh, this, this video also as the 11 important traits of successful coaches. So that is very straightforward but I'm making it the 11 attributes to become a unicorn in the coaching business. Now that there's an art to it. So even the titling, the communication, everything would also be in that way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Superb. Yeah. Ashok has mentioned a good point over here. Leadership is an art which can be learned by anyone. Uh, it, it is just a myth that leaders are born. Yeah. Leadership is something that can be developed. Okay. Now all of you type in the comment box. What is the science of this game? Let's jump into the science. According to you, what is the science of, uh, of the training and coaching business? 
Yeah. Kavita has also mentioned over here, innovation, active thinking is the art of communication. Yeah. Coordination with clients, following up with them and selling, that could also be under, I mean, there's a way on how you can creatively engage with your, with your audience. So what do you think is the science of the game? Let me feature some of your comments when it comes to science. Okay. So growth can be categorized under science. Yeah, definitely all the systems, systems for growth would all come under science. Vinod is mentioning your logical and meaningful presentation that bring value in addition to the student. So the science could also be the systems. It could be the skill sets. Mukesh mentioned skill sets. Naveen, good, good point that you mentioned here. It is the you know, making the rules that are right for business right now. You know, whenever students come through my, my process, I give them the rules of the game first. First, you need to understand how to play by the rules. How do you then master those, those systems? And then how you can bend the rules later on once you, are, once you have uh, understood the depth of the game. Yeah. Science is uh, plan your work and work on a plan, analyze your audience, designing your content. Very good. All the facts and num numbers, like Chandran has mentioned here, facts and numbers. So for me, I, I would look at, uh, I mean, the way that I look at it, for me, the art of this game is coming up with these unique ideas and stuff, you know, and, uh, you know, and unique ways of presenting knowledge and information. And the science of the game is when I'm looking at my dashboards, I'm looking at my, my Facebook advertising, my traffic generation, I'm looking at the entire science, all the logical side of the brain. Logical is what side of the brain? It is the uh, left side of the brain. Okay, Left brain is logical, right brain is creative. So the left brain is all the numbers related, how you can tweak you know, your funnels uh, and learning all the, all the systems, putting all the systems together, managing those systems, and some of you are creative people. You may think, oh, no, this is this is too heavy for me. I should not, you know, I don't want to get into this area. Let me let somebody else do this. But if you want to be a unicorn, you have to blend both. You have to be masters at both art and science. All of you just type in the con box. Art plus science equals unicorn. Type that in the con box. Art plus science equals unicorn. You cannot just be in that creative world and and forget about the numbers. You cannot just be in the number world and be only focused on system, 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 and not bring any you know, creativity into it. You have to have that element as well. And I, I have to really thank my uh, my background in music, okay? Uh, because uh, I, I believe that anyone who's into music or you know has some kind of, even art, if you see, I mean, those who are into any kind of uh, skills, that involve both left and right brain, it actually helps you be okay with both sides of it. See, for example, in music, there's a creative side to it. And uh, in music, there's also a logical side to it. I mean, I cannot just randomly play something and say it's creative. Okay. I have to, there's a logic, there's a logical progression to music. And there's also a creative element to it that really moves the heart. Okay. So having art and science blending was actually going to help you. Now let's come to the eight, eight one. The eighth attribute of a unicorn is adaptability. When I say adaptability, all of you just read this sticker over here. Okay. This is going to be really interesting for all of you to watch. Watch this now. Be fixed. Okay, I, I'll just stop this. Be fixed on your goal. Okay. Be fixed on your goal, on your vision, but flexible on your methods. And if you do the opposite of this, that's when you go wrong. When people are fixed on their method, but they're very flexible on their goal, they keep changing their target. That's where the problem happens. So when I say, if you want to be a unicorn and if you have to be adaptable, okay, when I say you got to be adaptable, it means that you have to be flexible with the way things are with the way things are moving in the world today. Okay, so for example, if you are somebody who is uh, you know who's been doing things in a particular way, you have a particular method, a particular formula which has been working for a particular time, but something happens, there's, there's a whole disruption in the, in, the, in the industry and things change. Now you have to be adaptable and you need to adapt really quickly. 
I mean, companies that did not adapt. Name some companies in the comment box that did not adapt and that died. Give me an example. I'll give you one hint, but I would like all of you to type in the comment box. According to you, what are the companies that were not quick to adapt? So-called unicorns that were not quick to adapt. I'll give you the first hint. Nokia. Okay. Shama, I think you got it. Give me some other examples. Let's have a whole bunch of companies. Okay. So I think Nokia is the first one that, that came to everyone's mind. Okay. Let me read a few more comments over here. So Shama has said Nokia. Yes. Gaurav also is mentioning the same thing. Yeah. Anand Shethi, you're right. Anand, uh, let's look at, there's one more here. Kodak. Yes. Kodak was not quick to adapt. Ambassador car. Okay. Ashok, right? Blackberry. Any other companies can you think of? Okay. Anyway, you guys get the point, right? See, the, when you are at a particular uh, stage in your business where you it may seem like you are the unicorn in your space, but if you don't have the mindset to adapt, it is only a temporary stage on which you are. But if you go to like crush it and move on further. I mean, look at companies like Apple and uh, look at, can you tell me uh, one company that has stuck for a long period of time? Can you tell me one company that stuck for a long period of time that has stood the test of time? I can give you one. What am I wearing here? Nike. They're one of the few companies that have stood the test of time. Okay. Give me a few more examples. Companies that have stood for more than 20 plus years that you can think of that we still use till today and you still are connected with it. Very few. You can actually count a few of them. Yeah. Yeah. Microsoft. Yeah. In the direct sales business, uh, we have uh, Amway, Nike. So these are examples of companies who, who have been able to adapt, who are able to quickly make policy changes and decisions. Now, coming back to the coaching and training industry. Adaptability is key. You got to develop a new formulas to make this happen. Okay. Let's go to number nine now. By the way, are you guys loving this? Just type loving it in the comment box. If you're learning a lot, just type loving it in the comment box. Okay. Yeah. We have Apple, Tata. It's a perfect example of a company. We have uh, Microsoft, 3M, also a company that has stood the test of time. Next, okay, Amazon is also one. Amazon is also a huge company that's that way. Number nine is having a collaboration mindset. If you want to be a unicorn in your knowledge business, you've got to have a collaboration mindset where there is no scarcity in this world. Okay, there's a scarcity versus abundance mindset. Abundance mindset is where there's room for more. There is no competition. Even if there are competitors, make them your collaborators. Very, very key, okay? And if you're able to resonate in that level, you know, because even if you have competition, technically they're not a competition because everybody has their own audience. Everybody has their own way of doing things. Everyone is unique in their own way. It's just a matter of how, uh, who's able to resonate with you because your vibe will attract your tribe. Your vibe will bring out the kind of students that, you know, who are able to resonate with you. So being that mindset of collaboration, like now I've created this alliance along with my, uh, with my, with my partner, Avi Arya, we have created this digital masters alliance. Nine of us have come together. I mean, there's always room for more, but we just kept it to nine so that, it's we can focus and work on stuff together. So we do collaboration webinars, we promote each other, we help each other. And we've seen all our businesses growing together because of having the giving mindset, abundance mindset, collaboration mindset, where, where we are open to sharing ideas with each other. We are open to sharing what's working for us right now. And now we are doing these big events all over India and also, you know, nurturing and coaching people in groups. So how many of you here believe that collaboration is key? Yeah, just type collaboration is key in the phone box that is going to open up new doors it'll also in one way help you drop your ego and uh, it'll help you open up open up those first few conversations with people and the best way to open up collaboration is to appreciate your competitors and not look at them as competitors look at them as other you know knights other k n i g h t s other knights on this journey who are also doing a great job okay look at all the influencers in your space in your own area and just go and even if they are a directly competing company it may it may seem 
if you know they are an influencer go and hit reach out to them and say you know hey you're doing a fantastic job you know i'd love to we would love to have i would love to have a conversation with you and how we can exchange ideas create a small whatsapp group bring like even four five people and meet every week and as long as even they have that mindset you know it's going to open up magical things you'll you'll be amazed at what can happen here number 10 the 10th element or the 10th uh, attribute to become a unicorn in your space is constant improvisation constantly improving your game so making those incremental tweaks on a day to day basis making those incremental tweaks on a weekly basis on a monthly basis because the 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 game never ends there's never end to this game you're always going to be playing this game you're always going to be improving on this game and how you can improve those small things actually create a huge result like if you look at the way when i started uh, like 18 months ago uh did my first webinar first few hundred customers who bought my product it was something like 2.9 lakhs or something in my first month and now the community has grown to over 29000 people in the span of 16 to 17 months okay and this has not happened overnight i've just stuck to the same thing and every day i just kept improving improving adding one more element one more element and before i go to sleep every night i'm only thinking to myself is what can, what is the one thing i can do to make the experience better for my customers what is the one thing i can do to improve the system to improve the efficiency so you need to look at the entire game in uh, three areas okay there are three areas to this game how many of you would like to know what are the three areas just type bio in the comment box what are the three things that you can improve and just note this down <clears throat> because this is something that i learned uh, from one of my other mentors his name is sam owens and he says that if you have to be like if you have to create a money machine where when you open the tap money flows like with without any resistance this is it okay let me now look at this hold on let me just pull up my notes i'm just pulling up my notes from one of my okay one second guys i'm just, i'm still live i'm just pulling out the, the this one over here okay okay so uh, the first part of it is uh, acquisition okay the the say phase one and not not phase one i'll say uh stage one acquisition I put this up here. So I want you to imagine your training and coaching business like a like a tap, okay? And if there are a lot of blockages in that tap, like when you open up the tap on the top and there's not much water coming, it means that there are there could be blockages in three areas. So the first area is the acquisition area. So what are you doing on a daily basis? What are you improvising on a on a daily, weekly, monthly basis to improve your acquisition of customers? So under acquisition would would come. uh lead generation uh how can you keep your cost per lead really low how can you keep your cost per, cost per acquisition really low so in order to do that what kind of content can you do creatively to keep that cost per low what kind of creatives can you do what kind of messaging can you do that can make it very attractive for the people to come into the door smoothly all of you with me till this point just type stage 1 noted type stage 1 noted if you have noted this one point okay so stage 1 is if you want to have a smooth throughput in your business you need to have a good acquisition uh you need to have a smooth flowing acquisition strategy and even the acquisition strategy is going to be uh where where you have to constantly keep improving it okay now let's come to the second part of it the second stage after acquisition is once they come in is uh conversions how you can improve the conversions so when i say conversion in my case i convert in my webinars so i can look at how i can improve that conversion process so if you're selling a product maybe you can look at uh how you how you can you know shorten the you know the conversion cycle the sales cycle if you're doing like a you know if you're selling a service or anything like that if you're selling a consultancy how you can automate some of these elements so that the you know there's there's no resistance for people to buy 
So conversions can also be the messaging during the point of sale. Conversion could also be the payment gateway system that you're using to make it smooth and efficient. And I keep testing different payment gateways. Instamojo, Razorpay, and I'm looking at what is the drop-off rate here, what is the drop-off rate there. So I'm constantly improving and seeing what can I do better to remove any kind of resistance in the conversion piece of the puzzle. So acquisition is the first, and second piece is conversion. If you have noted conversion, just type stage two noted. Okay. Right now we are still we are still in in attribute number ten, which is improvisation. Okay. And let's come to the stage number three. Stage number three is value delivery. See, a lot of trainer, uh, trainers, coaches, and speakers, and many consultants also. I'm seeing, you know, a lot of their Facebook ads and stuff, and all their ads are titled like this. You know, how you can, uh, you know, get ten high-paying clients in the next thirty days. How you can get twenty new customers in the next thirty days. How you can generate hundred leads very, very quickly. And what is all that focused on? On the acquisition piece. So a lot of the marketing messages are focused on how to get more customers, how to make more money, how to increase your profits, all of that stuff. Okay, but uh, one thing I will tell you is if you are relentless on your value delivery, that means when people, when they enter your world and they be like, wow, this is like freaking awesome. When they feel that, right? Everything becomes, uh, you know, the, the stage one and stage two, stage two becomes so much more easier. How many of you agree with me with, on the point that if your value delivery is crap, then no matter what you do in stage one and stage two, it's it's going to it's only going to help you struggle more in that business. In fact, it'll go in the negative direction. Okay, when people suppose they come into a product and they feel that you're not you're not giving them enough value, or if for whatever money they paid, they feel that they didn't get enough value for that. What's going to happen is it'll also create a negative loop for you. Negative feedback, negative reviews. In fact, at this point, I think I have more than two hundred reviews on Trustpilot. If you just go and search for Siddharth Rajcheka review and you see a trust pilot one link, you, you can go and read those comments over there. Because I, I'm relentless in the third piece over here, value delivery. In, 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 even in my community, when people go through my courses, when they're inside my community, I emphasize a lot on creating something of high value and high substance because then the stage one and stage two can be fixed later on. It can always be improved. And even now, I'm focusing a lot on value delivery. I'm focusing a lot on improving the existing system that I have based on the feedback that I'm getting inside my community. So right now, with thousands of people in my community, I keep running surveys. And there's a uh, quick tip that I can give all of you here. Even if you have 10, 15, 20 customers, run a Google form survey and ask them, how can I improve this better? How can I, how can I help you get results better? What is keeping you stuck? What is your biggest challenge that you're facing right now? And the more you get survey feedback, that is going to become the food for you to work on your system. How many of you found this like gold? Just type gold in the comment box. You want to become a unicorn? You have to notch up on your improvisation. And improvisation on all the three elements of your, of your business. The customer acquisition piece, the conversion component, as well as the value delivery. Because in the, if the value delivery is so amazing, the first two will, will become even more seamless. Okay. And just to give you like an open number, I'm just throwing out, I'm telling you a real statistic for me, like people buy my course at 8,000 rupees at this point. Okay. 799 is what I, I give an offer in my webinar when people come and buy. And my cost to acquire that customer is, uh, is 2,000 rupees. Maximum say 2,500 rupees. Why? Because my throughput in my business is smooth because I have, I'm improvising on all the three elements on the lead generation piece where I'm getting like 20 to 30 rupees per lead on the conversion piece, where I'm looking at my own webinars and seeing how I can add more value in webinar and where when people attend my webinars, they feel like they've got so much of value that, you know, inside my course, they're going to get even more. And that, that's a fact. You know, if anyone pays you one, one rupee, they're going to get 10 rupees of value. And of course, the value giving part is where I'm keeping the community together, getting feedback and suggestions. And yeah, I also screw up. I also make mistakes. I also, I openly apologize in case I have not kept up my word. So that is also a very important piece when it comes to especially building customer base is uh, dropping the ego. When you feel you've done a mistake, just be open about it. Okay, Be transparent in your business. Be transparent at all the different levels. Yeah, fantastic. So now let's come to the last point of this. Yeah, let's come to the last point, which is the most important because this is the 11th attribute 
to become a unicorn in your space. The eleventh attribute to become a unicorn in your space is your mission. If your mission is bigger than than the personality, your mission should be bigger than you. And this is where a lot of people get it wrong. And I've seen this also happening, where everything is about me, 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 me. Okay, where they feel that they are the greatest in the world, and the whole focus is is on how great I am and how great my product is and how great my system is and how great this is and the whole you know focus is shifted back on them and not on the mission and i have to attribute this to one of my uh, one of my mentors blair singer he says if you are able to keep this in mind you can never go wrong in decision making you guys want to know what it is just type b i o in the comment box type bring it on and please note this down okay i'm just typing this down this if you remember for the rest of your life you'll be a game changer in your space mission first community second me third if you always keep the mission first if you're making any decision right any decision in your community if the mission is the priority if it's going to be you know fulfilling a, a greater mission then that's a decision to make if it's going to help the community that's a second priority and you are the third priority and if this has gone deep inside your head trust me i've done my part in today's video i've done my part in today's uh, you know 11 attributes okay so just to recap to let all of you know what are the 11 attributes uh, let's just bring it let's see if i can bring all of these out down here in the ticker is uh, let's see if all of this come first one is having the right intentions second is craftsmanship third is going uh, having depth in knowledge number four is having original ideas when you're presenting your information Number five is focusing focus on getting results for yourself and for your customers. Number six is attribution to your mentors. Don't just claim that this knowledge is your own. Number seven is master the art and the science of the game, both left and right brain. Number eight, be adaptable. Okay, be, have the adaptability. Be fixed on your goal, but be flexible on the methods on how you're going to be helping, you know, move forward. Number nine is collaboration mindset. because that's that can open up new doors number 10 is constant improvisation at all the three aspects of your business number 11 is having you know where your mission is bigger than the personality okay and these are the 11 attributes in case you just hopped into this uh, video live you want to watch the recording you can go to my youtube channel or even see it on my facebook page uh, please hit the subscribe button and subscribe to my channel in case you are brand new over here then i would recommend you go to this link okay and let's connect live in, in my next webinar if you go to sids.co/freedom uh, we can connect in my next live webinar and if you're already in my community that's awesome i would love you to share this video in, in case you found this video useful please do this I'm writing this down so that you can see it as a ticker please share this right now because somebody else out there can get their entire game transformed just by just by by implementing this and you know what i i want to gift a few books for people to share when you're sharing please use please use this hashtag okay i'm going to be putting a hashtag if you use this hashtag freedom with sids i'll be able to track how many people are sharing this video on facebook or uh, on youtube maybe i won't be able to check on youtube i'm going to be checking this mainly on facebook because you are on facebook right now and i'm going to be picking uh, three people just randomly and i'll be messaging you uh, if you have shared this video on your on your timeline okay just my way of giving back to you because when you pay it forward i would like to uh, you know acknowledge and honor your action that you have taken so thank you so much you have come to the end of this video and if you are watching this on uh, on my youtube channel please hit the subscribe button please hit the bell button stay connected and if you're watching this on my facebook connect with me on youtube and if you're watching on youtube connect with me on facebook on facebook i have my my fan page hit the follow button and make it see first so that you get all the updates and stuff and uh, you know thank you so much for your time i really respect the time that you've given to watch this long video and i and i know that this has made a difference in your life okay it's been close to a 1 hour video but i know this is this can be the game changer for you and for your in your coaching business thank you so much
Cheers. God bless. Have a phenomenal day. Bye-bye.